notice our soil movement throughout the winter. We also notice into the water areas. There is uh, more of a murky water going into the drainage ditches than there was in the past and because we just don't have the uh, vegetation holding this soil back. We are working with farmers and ranchers to implement conservation projects on working ranches. I get inspired um, all the time by the different people that we work with. And one of the biggest times that I've had is working with John Stevens on his uh, slough um, and riparian uh, restoration project. Working with Audubon was uh, really neat. See, as we get down further, the, the creeping wild rye, the rhizomatous grass, the sod forming one is really starting to take over this lower bench. They probably thought my ideas were crazy. I thought some of theirs were crazy. But in the end, we put a plan together. Underneath me here are some drip lines in the grasses and we put in an irrigation system that's tied into our water system. So up on the, the higher banks, we are getting uh, actually water from a, a drip system and not uh, just uh, weeping out of the bottom of the slough. As far as uh, making a uh, border, we have used uh, these species of grasses and we've kind of made a more or less a uh, grass fence and I think that's a real good idea. Uh, even uh, the workers know that anything on one side of that grass is uh, off limits really for a disc or Roundup or other type herbicides so I think it's going to work out okay. When I was a young kid uh, growing up, I used to come down to this area and the banks all actually were more sloped like this. I can remember and people, uh, different family members actually could walk right down to it. For some reason in the la in 30 or 40 years, they just kind of uh, went back to a steep, narrow uh, slough and uh, mainly back to a, a drainage ditch, I would call it, instead of a slough in a wildlife uh, uh, conveyance through the property here. Being fourth generation, obviously uh, it's been in the family for since the 1850s. And uh, even as a, a young boy, I can remember the pheasant hunts and the wildlife on the property. And that was a big growing up in my day to uh, come out and go with my uh, father and grandfather pheasant hunting. Uh, we have not been able to do that on this uh, farm for probably 25 years. Uh, a lot of the wildlife, not only uh, pheasants, but even the fox and things that came down this slough and uh, actually uh, drank uh, probably and lived in the area uh, have all gone now. And uh, we feel like uh, bringing some more trees and some uh, grasses and uh, widening the sloughs will enhance the wildlife population in the area. Uh, one of the things uh, with uh, using the uh, students to help plant. The project was the Sloughs project. They were uh, high school age and they came out on projects from Sacramento area, Woodland, Dixon. The students went to different ranches and one was uh, Yolo Land and Cattle which was the Stone family and they also did some native planting uh, on their ranch. Other farmers want to uh, not give up any land and open up the sloughs because they do have to be widened and sloped. Otherwise, there's really isn't any place to plant uh, some native uh, species on the steep sides of the slough. So that is probably one of the big things that uh, farmers are not really willing to give up their uh, property because uh, they're making uh, a profit on that acre that they might have to give up. And it's gone forever. We kind of figured that this ranch needs to uh, take in possibly $200 an acre. Uh, so if I lost uh, three acres, I have lost that amount of money in my farming scheme. But that's uh, fairly small uh, if we can get uh, more wildlife and plants and uh, even the siltation problems. Uh, that's very little in the whole scheme of things, I believe. There's probably only two other farmers in this area that uh, have some type of a restoration projects ongoing at this time. The students came out with a slough project 
uh, which uh, that is their uh, calling card sitting over there. Uh, they left that for me. We actually, at this spot, we would form into groups and every one of those deer grass planted along there, they were in uh, plugs and they uh, put all of those in. They actually planted the oak trees, uh, the cottonwood and the willow that you see on in the background. So uh, they were really uh, fortunate and I was fortunate to have them uh, do all the planting. Since we were here uh, five years ago, this is uh, how uh, large the uh, trees have grown up. And they probably uh, all uh, at least uh, eight feet taller. Uh, the deer grass was just a little plug, a little plant, and now they're up uh, three to four foot high at this time. This area is here is uh, where we have seen pheasant come in. Uh, they seem to like that little open area down in the bottom there. But if you'll notice, that's uh, a bench, and then the, the original slough is where you see the brownish uh, material along its bank. And uh, that was the original slough uh, bottom, and we never uh, disturbed that a bit. The main benefit we have noticed is water quality. The, uh, Grasses and things in the slough seems to filter out some of the sediments. We're seeing pheasants again and abundant of quail. And that was one thing my grandfather really loved to see the quail on the ranch and it, the quail has come back now. The pheasant hunt uh, will have to wait and maybe three more years we feel and there'll be enough uh, birds that uh, my grandchildren maybe will be old enough to be able to hunt.